Hi guys, this one's a little bit of a bonus. It wasn't part of the original script when we were going to be doing some bespoke automotive chapters talking about our work at DG Design. Um, but in the course of pulling this together, uh, this particular little body of work that I've been doing on, on the side has, has really attracted some interest. I've had a lot of feedback suggest you guys would like to know a bit more about how it was done. Um, I'm referring to the recent uh, DeLorean pro car work that I uh, put on Instagram um, seems to attract quite a lot of attention. People have sort of been saying, how did you produce the images? How, that this whole sort of retro vibe thing is, is really cool. How, how did you do that in V-Red? Um, I, I didn't actually produce that many images in total. I did, I did a very sort of basic poster uh, looking at the design from the, the front and the rear three quarter. Uh, which seemed okay. I got the ball rolling, but I felt there was there was more to do with the car. There's something about the character of this car that I that I really liked, and that sort of wide stance, big sort of Gijaro wedge thing. I, I'd really want to sort of play with a little bit more. So I, I hinted at some sort of uh, future sort of retro race scene. These things sort of competing with each other, uh, very sort of brightly, garishly lit. Uh, and, and the final artworks came together really, really nicely. But, but if I'm really honest with you guys, I, I was struggling. You know, at the very start of the project, you know, the design came together quite nicely. You know, we, we, I'd got it up and running in Alias. I was, I was very happy with it. Um, it, was, it. It was sort of inspired by the BMW Pro Car series. Uh, and my feeling was, was, was it was a shame that at the time the DeLorean, you know, had, had all the looks, everything going for it. But it didn't really have the you know, sort of performance characteristics to match. So I was kind of imagining it's like, okay, well, let's let's imagine this as if it was as like a, a single mate race series. If this thing had taken to the tracks in the early eighties, wouldn't that have been a spectacular? And the model came together really, really nicely. Uh, it was fun to do, very, very simple surfaces. Um, but when it came to putting it into V-Red, I, I tried a lot of different things to start with and just couldn't find anything that, that really suited the character of it. Um, and I was like, well, where am I going with this? I've not really had this kind of creative block before. Um, and then just, just for fun, I started uh, doing a bit of research, sort of looking at, well, how, how have DeLoreans been rendered? And, and obviously, there's a lot of this sort of retro wave influences that come in. Um, you know, it's such an iconic 80s car. So these kind of very iconic 80s graphics, this very sort of iconic colorway, if you like, is very sort of distinctive color palette. Uh, it's not something that really suits the car, really suits, suits um, the, the nature of the design. So this is something I wanted to try and get my head around. I've not really done any artworks like this of any description, but yeah, obviously, clearly the defining factor is the sort of geometric background uh, and the color palette. You know, we're very much into sort of magentas uh, and cyans in terms of uh, colors for the most part. So I thought, okay, well, let, let's have a go in V-Red and, and see what we can do. So. What I want to do is just sort of you know, deconstruct um, these artworks that I produced and give you a few pointers as to how you could go about producing something very similar yourselves if you wanted to explore that vibe. So if we if we look at the thing in V-Red, um, this, is, this is the session as it's running. Um, like I said, the initial artwork was produced based on yeah, this back plate. This was something I'd found online. Uh, but I thought, you know, parking the car in front of that yeah, really captured the mood. Um, Obviously, within this, there's there's key lights that are sort of driving the thing. There's a there's a magenta spotlight, and there's a cyan spotlight, and they're sort of yeah parked at opposite ends of the car. So you get this sort of flood of light from one side that's one colour, flood of light from the other side that's another. But behind here as well, if we look at the scene graph, um, I've actually got a HDRI in here that that I'd gone back in and recolored. Um, the saturation's turned down it, but if we bring the saturation up to full, so I've basically taken a standard HDRI and just run a gradient across it so that you get this sort of play of additional light across the vehicle and you get some of those reflections, some of the highlights coming in. So when you've got your scene plate back on, you, know, you, you get a little bit of this when you hit the uh, ray tracing button. That kind of shows up in the scene. You get that kind of vibe going on with it. So. For the first two renders, you know, the front and rear three quarter, uh, that worked fine to just sort of capture the mood of the time uh, and give you this kind of like re retro wave vibe. Um, but I wanted to do something a bit more than that. I wanted to do something with it, a, a bit more life in it. And that's when the second set of images came in, which is kind of like this sort of 
fake race scene. You know, we'd, we'd already kind of set the scene with the story about it. You know, being a one mate race series. You know, there's hints of a uh, race at Long Beach. So I want to kind of capture some of that in a sort of fun vibe, but but also you know playing on sort of early eighties references. You know, there's a little bit of that sort of Tron light cycle thing. I wanted to get a little bit of. Um, that kind of feel is sort of the light sort of blowing out the front and the rear of these vehicles. So what I did was if we turn that scene plate off, there's, there's additional geometry I can show you that's in here. If we pull that track up, um, you can start to see that it's, it's in, the track itself has walls front and beneath it, um, which when I actually start to hit ray tracing, you can hopefully see. Uh, it's not showing in the demo, but it, but yeah, there's a there's a there's a ground plane and a back wall, and and they are simply planes uh, where if you go into into them, we, we interrogate them a little bit so you can see a little bit more of what's going on. There's a plane running through the model. Uh, that's, that's the side wall, which again on the um, incandescence channel has has the graphic mapped onto it from the original backplate if you like so I grabbed that sort of upper sun region and dropped that uh, and projected it on as, as a texture map and again looking at the uh, the ground plane similar story again you know we, we're grabbing another bit from the original render uh, and dropping that in as a ground plane so you're creating almost this kind of like barrier this fence um, and then within it if we bring up the other car so that we can see what's going on with that there we go if we switch that on you can see that coming out the back of the car there's this kind of sort of tron light cycle streaky light effect and that was produced by simply coming back into alias and creating this street which is extruded from that brake light uh, and then assigning within vred uh, a simple sort of glow shader to it um, so you get that kind of chopped up effect and if, if we actually look at the shader properties if you go into it uh, into the incandescence channel there's a there's a messed up reflector in there there's, there's just a kind of little bit of sort of fractalized um, geometry uh, sorry a, a texture map that's, that's helping to play that and at the front end there's literally as you can see from this there's, there's just a series of spotlights that are sort of angled down pointing towards the ground plane uh, so that when you actually hit render, you, you start to get these bumps of light hitting the floor, um, which is what gives you the effect. And then beyond this within the scene, there's animation on the wheels to make those rotate, um, which give that impression of movement of, as one car passes another. Um, and if we come back to the camera views on this, I was using pretty wacky camera views. They're all, they're all quite extreme. Um, but if we look at the camera settings themselves, if we go into uh, here in image processing, you can see that I've got glow enabled. Not very big values, there's a, there's a little bit in there, there's a little bit of threshold size and intensity, you can reference those values if you want to. But that kind of gives it that sort of slightly warm, fuzzy quality. But the nice thing about using these uh, side walls and this floor plane is as an incandescence channel is obviously you can see that when you ray trace it, they're now bouncing light across the models, um, which is great. You know, it gives it that extra depth, gives it that extra sense of drama, gives it that sort of 80s pastiche. Um, and, and to be honest, as a, as a first time out of the box, being able to produce images like this within V-RED, yeah, feels nice to have been able to do it. And um, now that I've got this technique pegged down, it's something I can apply uh, again and again, I'm perhaps looking at it from a slightly different perspective, but. Um, yeah, it's it's one that I've certainly enjoyed doing as as a piece of work, and in the end, after my initial sort of creative block, looking at how I was going to produce it, uh, I'm I'm happy with the result. So if it's if it's something that's of use to you guys, then great. Feel free to rob the technique and have a play. Cheers.